G'day Starlo here. Welcome to part two of my two-part masterclass comparing and contrasting soft plastics and hard-bodied lures. Looking at when to use each one, how to use them best, and some of the advantages and disadvantages of these two popular lure styles. In part one, I took a deep dive, pardon the pun, <laughs> into floating diving minnows and plugs, and I managed to catch a couple of cracking brim on them, wow. as well as talking you through exactly how to work those hard-bodied lures. Look, if you missed that first episode, I strongly recommend that you chase it up and have a look. I'll put the link to it up here, and also down below in the description and the comments. Please have a look at that first and then come back and watch the rest of this, unless you just want to go straight to soft plastics. <laughs> and if you do, you know, I can't blame you. Over the last 20 years or so, I've fished soft plastics more than any other style of lure. I absolutely love fishing with them and I've caught plenty of fish on them. I've learned a little bit along the way and I'm gonna try and impart some of that knowledge to you this afternoon. We've got a much better day than I had for the hard bodied segment of this masterclass. The sun's out, a little bit of breeze, it's still pretty cool. I'm just hoping it's not too bright and clear, but I'm pretty confident in the soft plastics. I've got a little squidgy prawn on here. I'm going to put a bit of best factor on it and then I'm going to start fishing it in some deeper water because of the bright conditions. I'm going to fish out in sort of two to three meters at least to start with and then as the sun sinks we might move in on the edges. I promised you in that first episode that if you hung in there until the very end I'd give you a couple of tips and clues that'll make a dramatic difference to your fishing with both hard bodies and soft plastics and I haven't forgotten that promise. I'll be giving you those tips at the end of this episode. But for now, let's motor out to my first spot and see if we can find a few fish. As always, I slipped my kill switch lanyard on when traveling, even though I don't have very far to go this time. It's a good habit to get into. Wow, what a great looking afternoon. <laughs> it's probably a bit too good for red hot fishing, but I guess we'll see. So I've motored out onto a, a big flat here. It's all about two and a half to three meters deep. Doesn't look like there's much in the way of features, but I actually know that there's a couple of isolated snags out here, some tree trunks that have washed into the lake during flood time. I've got them marked on my GPS, so I'm standing about 25 meters away from one and I'm gonna to cast towards it. Get my soft plastic onto the bottom and just bounce it out. I've gotta be careful not to cast over the tree and get snagged. I wanna be just short of it. Make the fish come out if possible and eat the plastic. <laughs> we'll see how we go. I'm gonna slip the sunnies on though. It's pretty bright. Hopefully not too bright for a fish. A little bit of a uh, nor'easterly breeze blowing in my face here, so I'm going to have to punch into that. That's probably a bit too short, that cast, but I'll fish it out anyway. Most important thing is to get the plastic onto the bottom first. It's well and truly on the bottom now. And then I just make contact with it and start doing little hops. And I'm watching that belly of line like a hawk. Yep. There we go. First cast. That's nice. Oh, a good fish. That was this really, I wouldn't say a soft tap, it was sharp, but it was very, very light. It was just a distinct tap. And that is so often what you get with brim. Oh yeah, it's a nice one too. Might have a little bit too much drag on there. Oh, cracker. Oh, he's not done. Wow. There's such good fish, big brim. They go so hard. I'm gonna back that drag off another couple of clicks. Oh. Yep, it's a good one. <laughs> a nice way to start. You see what I meant about how slowly and methodically I was working that soft plastic, not lifting it very far off the bottom, just hopping it, making contact with it again. And it was on the drop after one of those hops and I had to actually set the hook. It's a big brim. Oh, might've only been a tick, but he got it well in. 
Look at that. Got a little bit of a saw there. And these black brim do get a few sores on them, particularly uh, in warmer water, but at the moment the water's cold. It's about 12 or 13 degrees. <sighs> Let me give you a good look at this fish. That's a fish in the low 40s, I reckon, about 41 to the tail tips, 38 forks, something like that. A good 1.1, 1.15 kilos. And uh, look at that, absolutely inhaled that soft plastic. And that's what happens when you fish at lift and drop like that. Because it's dropping down through the water, they're able to just suck it in. And that's that tick you feel. It's a really sharp little suck. And then their mouth closes on it, and you've got about half a second to react, or nine times out of 10, they're gonna spit it out again. And I reacted by setting the hook, and that is the result. And that is how easy soft plastic fishing can sometimes be. Not always. <laughs> that was literally the first cast. I'll put this one in the live well, see if he's got any mates in there. We might even find a really big one. <laughs> oh, I'm stoked. That first brim actually measured just over 42 centimeters to the tail tips. And with it safely in the live well, I'm trying for another making sure not to let my excitement speed up my retrieve and presentation too much. That's an easy trap to fall into. Oh, had another bump. It was a different kind of bite, that one. Felt very much like it just grabbed the end of the tail and pulled on it. And you know, that can be seen as a drawback of soft plastics. The hook is situated well forward in the lure and it needs to be to optimize the action. And nine times out of 10, it doesn't matter because the fish will tend to take the lure head first. But every now and again, you will get a tail biter like that one. I'm gonna check my lure and make sure he hasn't pulled the plastic down into the bend. No, nope, looks fine. All right, let's get it back up there. I'm watching that belly align even on the drop because the fish could pick it up on the way down. It's on the bottom now. It's a little bit hard to tell in this breeze, but I can just see that belly of line relax slightly when it makes contact with the bottom. Much easier in calm, still conditions, but you get a bit of a feel for it after a while. And I know that it's only taking probably three or four seconds for this lure to get to the bottom anyway, in two and a half to three meters of water. Five seconds and it's definitely on the bottom. And I want to keep it down in that lower third of the water column, right through the retrieve, as I reckon that's where the fish will be. I also need to be ready to react to the slightest bump. Although not every bump is a fish. Okay, I've managed to snag my soft plastic on the tree that I was casting towards. I'm going to move up. This will probably put the fish off, but I'll go to another one. I'm going to move up just past it and see if I can get the lure off. There we go. Sometimes all you gotta do is get on the other side of it and it comes straight off. It's a good little trick. <laughs> all right, I'm gonna to move to my next mark. The sun's sinking lower now too, which can't be a bad thing. Reduced light levels tend to make the fish a little bit less cautious. Bit of a change of pace now. I've come into shallower water. It's only a metre to a metre and a half deep in here. And there's some snags, what our American friends would call laydowns. So trees actually lying on the bottom, arching up off the bottom. Great places for fish to hang out underneath. It's actually really good country for a hard bodied lure. I love fishing hard bodies in this kind of country, but I want to show you that you can also fish a soft plastic on these snags very effectively. Check that drag. I've still got my open water six pound leader on here, which is a little bit risky. I probably should go up to eight or even 10 pound, but I'm gonna stick with the six. <laughs> Live dangerously. I'm just using the bow mounted electric motor to very quietly get myself into position. Just a nice casting distance from these laydowns. The fish will be spooky in this shallow water, so I don't want to get too close, but I want to be able to just get my lure into the zone. What I'm going to do when the soft plastic hits the water is let it sink vertically straight down the front of the snag. As soon as it touches the bottom, I'm going to start hopping it away from the snag. 
that's probably a little bit too far but we'll give it a go yeah I only got within about four meters of the snag probably not close enough but I'll fish it out anyway Nah, got to get closer than that. All right, this next cast should be on the money. That's pretty good. Yeah, that was pretty good. Oh, now I've got to get him out of there. Oh, <laughs> luckily he hesitated for just a second or two before turning back for the snag and I was able to get a couple of cranks on him. Oh, I don't want to get in there too. Oh, he's a good fish. I'll just use the electric to push us back a bit. Oh, okay, I've got him boiling on the surface here, well clear of the snag, but he might be able to run back there, I don't know. And there you go, fishing soft plastics on a snag. As I said, great hard bodied water, but also very good soft plastic water. Oh, what a powerful fish. It's nice, the breeze is just pushing me back away now. I used the electric to get off the snag a little bit and now I've killed it and we're just drifting out into relatively open water. I say relatively because you never know when there might be another tree lying out here as well. So it pays to keep the rod up, keep as little line in the water as possible and don't spend any longer on the fish than you need to. Six pound litre so I can't go too hard. I tightened that drag up because I was fishing snaggy country, so I'll back it off a little bit now that we're out in more open water. Oh! Oh, he's gone right through under the boat. Just got to be careful of both motors here. Oh! Good fish, good fish. It's the local commuter plane coming into a nearby airport. Got him. Not quite as big as my first one, but still a very handsome fish and hooked almost identically to that first one. He's just sucked it back in and got the hook in the roof of his mouth there. <laughs> I can't tell you how cold this fish feels. It feels like it, it's come out of the fridge. <laughs> uh, that's winter time on the far south coast of New South Wales. 13 or 14 degree water but the black brim are still active and very catchable on both plastics and hard bodies and they are one of my favorite fish at this time of the year a real savior down here in the winter time i gotta tell you i'll pop him in the live well with his mate we'll see if we can get another one <laughs> but before i get carried away trying to catch another fish time for a bit more nitty gritty instruction You'll remember in the first part of this masterclass that I talked you through a whole retrieve with a hard body lure. Go back and check that out if you didn't see it the first time around or if you've forgotten some of it. I'm just going to talk you through a cast and retrieve with a soft plastic now. And it begins by me either casting it as far as I can or as close to structure as I can. And in this case, I'm working structure. So I'm going to get it in there close to that snag. That's not bad. Get it onto the bottom. It's very shallow in there, so it doesn't take very long. Make contact. And then it's just little lifts and drops. And everyone's got their different style for working a soft plastic. Some people like a little double hit, some like a triple hit. Some just do a single lift and a drop. It's really whatever works for you. And some days the fish want a particular style of retrieve. So experiment, fish it all the way back. Because I'm fishing structure here, I would normally fish it out about halfway and then just retrieve it in with a steady retrieve. But if I was out in open water, I'd work that plastic all the way back to the boat and it'll often get eaten right here. <laughs> but look what happened. It picked up some weed. It's very weedy in, in the shallows here. 
and once you've picked up weed it's basically all over all right I'll keep repeating that process see if we can find another one of those stonking big brim that's a good cast deserves a fish But things have gone a bit quiet after that first one off the snags. A shallow running hard bodied lure would be an excellent choice here. Probably a better choice than a soft plastic, especially with the amount of weed that's on the bottom. Something that just runs a foot or so under the surface, 30 centimetres, and I could keep it up nice and high in the water and not get weeded up. But because I'm showing you soft plastics, I'm going to stick with them. That's a good cast. weed it up again. I just think it's probably a bit too shallow in here at the moment. Lovely uh, green weed for catching a blackfish. <laughs> I should collect some and take it home. Seems like that might be it for the day and I'm fast running out of light. I better let those fish go and give you those extra tips I've been promising. Time to put these lovely fish back for next time or maybe for you to catch. <laughs> How good does he look in the late afternoon sun? Off you go mate, I'll see you again when you're 46 or 47 centimetres long. Now remember at the beginning of this two-part masterclass on soft plastics and hard-bodied lures, I told you that if you hung in until the end, I'd give you a couple of really important tips that'll improve your results wherever you fish, whether you're using hard-bodied lures or soft plastics. And you've done it, so I'm going to give you the tips. <laughs> the first one is don't be afraid to use some scent. I absolutely love S factor. I reckon it makes a difference. Some days it makes a big difference, some days it makes a lot less of a difference, but at the very least it masks all those human odours that we inadvertently transfer to our lures. Things like insect repellent and sunscreen and fuel and just the smell of humans which fish don't like. So by putting this stuff on you mask all of that, but I think it takes it a step further. The fish actually really do like it. They hang on to the lure a bit longer and they're more likely to come back if they miss it the first time. So that's tip number one. And and the other tip is just fish as light as you can for the prevailing conditions. Use the lightest, thinnest main line and the finest leaders that you can get away with and you will get more strikes. Now you don't want to go overboard and fish too light and start losing a lot of fish. Finesse fishing is great but there's also what I call the finesse conundrum. If you take it too light you start losing more fish than you land. So you've got to find that fine line <laughs> between strength and finesse when you do find it your results will go right up. My first reaction to any tough bite is to downsize my lures, downsize my leader diameter, lengthen up my leaders, stay a little bit further off the cover that I'm casting towards, just make things a little bit more sneaky, use a bit of subterfuge, a bit of finesse, and you'll catch a lot more fish, no matter what you've got on the end of your line. <laughs> I really hope you've enjoyed this two-part masterclass. Look, if you have, please give me a thumbs up like down below. And if you don't already subscribe to the channel, what are you doing? <laughs> Jump on there and subscribe. There's lots more stuff like this coming up. You can help me to produce content like this too by shouting me a beer or buying me a coffee <laughs> for just five bucks. And every five bucks that I get puts a bit more fuel in my boat and car tanks and lets me travel around and produce material like this for you. I'd really appreciate it if you could just kick the can and shout me a beer or buy me a coffee, but you don't have to. I'm giving you this stuff anyway. <laughs> Look, until next time, this is Starlo wishing you tight lines. I reckon I might have time for one more brim. <laughs>